Hey everybody, this is Wes Fryer. Today is November the 11th, 2022. Happy Veterans Day. I'm here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'd just like to do a little brief introductory video to share a little bit about what I am doing professionally, as well as some of my other out-of-school, non-work interests. Um, and if there's anything at all that I mentioned that is of interest, you can probably get a link to it on my website, westfriar.com slash after. I've just collected all of my social media channels and the websites I'm going to mention there. And so that's a great place to find a connection to me if any of the things I talk about are of interest. So my wife and I, um, this lovely glare that I don't quite have worked out. Um, my wife and I have three kids. We moved from Oklahoma City to Charlotte, North Carolina this past summer in August of 2022. I uh, have lived here for about uh, three and a half months and are loving it. I am teaching media literacy and STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, math at Providence Day School. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I love food and I love cooking. Um, I especially love barbecue. So on my website, food.westfriar.com, you can find all the recipes for our family, um, but I also post um, videos, and I, I got my new license plate in North Carolina, so I got Cook With West. But Cook With West is the handle that I use on Instagram as well as Twitter. I'd experimented with a YouTube channel just for cooking, but I have a bunch of subscribers on my regular YouTube channel, so I've made a playlist. So you can go to youtube.com slash wfryer and find that playlist. I think it's actually linked with my shortened URL, which is wfryer.me slash cook. Um, but there's a whole bunch of videos and I continue to add to that. So I am teaching, as I said, here at a wonderful school, Providence Day School, that is just uh, southeast of City Center in Charlotte. Uh, we live in Matthews, which is a little bit further out. But I have set up a website, lessons.westfriar.com, as my classroom hub, and I use this every day to share slideshows like the one I'm uh, sharing here, um, but also to have my lesson resources available that I refer to and use, but also to share that out with other teachers. So currently I'm teaching two different courses in four different sections, and one of those is a robotics class. So all my classes currently are for, for sixth, seventh, or eighth graders. They're elective classes, and so we're using the Lego Spike Prime robot and doing a whole lot of awesome things with our robots. I went to Carnegie Mellon's Robotics Academy this past summer up in Pittsburgh. Uh, their website curriculum is actually linked on my site, but it's cs2n.org, uh, and so we're actually right now just finishing up the movement unit, and we're about to uh, go into sensors and I think if then, um, wait until, wait until statements. So I also teach the computer applications course here, which I would prefer to call media literacy, but this is a course in which, yes, we talk about you know keyboarding and productivity software like Google applications, but a lot is media literacy and learning how to create and communicate with different forms of media. We also learn how to be hopefully more savvy and critical critically thinking consumers of media. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to be creators of media. So <clears throat> media literacy is a, a Mardi Gras throat, a bandwagon, uh, an, an instructional movement, uh, curricular movement that I got on a number of years ago. Back in 2019, I had a chance to attend the Summer Institute in Digital Literacy, which is up was that summer up in Providence, Rhode Island. It'll be back there in the summer of 2023. The last few years, it's been online, and so I had a chance, or have had a chance, to join the faculty. But all my resources related to media literacy, you can find on this Google site that I've set up, medialiteracy.westfriar.com. Uh, you can get links to the Summer Institute and other things as well. So uh, media literacy, uh, means a whole lot of different things. But one of the goals that I have as a teacher is to try and really spark curiosity and wonder that students have about our universe, our world, um, and specifically about science and technology and the intersection of those things. So I've been using what I call wonder links. I've called them curiosity links before for a number of years. About a month ago, I had a chance to do a webinar for a 
awesome group out of uh, Ontario, Canada called Talking Science, and it was just about this, Wonderlinks, short little video clips or websites that we can share and talk about to try and catalyze conversations in the classroom, really getting at curiosity and wonder. And so you can check those out on my website as well. Another media literacy project which is ongoing, I call Conspiracies and Culture Wars. Another teacher that's in the Chicago area, Brian Turnbaugh and I, started this back in the summer of 2019 at the Summer Institute in Digital Literacy. Um, I have a website of resources that you can find on the Media Literacy website if you do, do slash con CW for Conspiracies and Culture Wars. And I use that hashtag on Twitter actually, and I've got a link to the, the feed of my tweets to share resources that tie into this. The lesson I've been teaching, and I think this is my third year to do it, um, I call Fruit Loop Conspiracy Theories. And this past May, in May of 22, I had a chance to share this presentation at Atlas in Orlando. Atlas is the Association of Technology Leaders in Independent Schools. And so <laughs> I wanted to title this actually, How to Teach About Conspiracy Theories and Not Be Fired. Um, but uh, I was persuaded to change it to a less controversial title. But basically, we are talking about web literacy strategies that are based on SIFT, which is this big poster in my room, uh, to stop, investigate the source, find trusted coverage, and trace to the original. I really, really um, want to be able to teach my students how to be more savvy consumers of media. We live in a polluted and a fractured information environment, and conspiracy theories have been around forever, but we're also in a highly politicized environment, and so rather than talking about contemporary conspiracy theories or political conspiracy theories, we talk about the Apollo moon landings, and we focus on how folks who are, who are saying it was a hoax and saying that it never happened, you know, draw on some, some um, techniques that, that other people use sometimes in conspiracy theories that are very outlandish, that are far out, and that's kind of what I call the Fruit Loop conspiracy theory. So you can get that lesson and resources, that presentation, I've got an audio recording of it, all of, of that on my media literacy site. I love space, and my wife does too. Last February, we had a chance for the first time to attend the SEEK conference, the Space Exploration Educators Conference that's at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And I went ahead uh, as a result of, of our experiences there and made another website, another Google site. But that one is just space.westfriar.com. And so you can get a host of different resources related to NASA, space exploration, uh, the Artemis um, space program. Um, our son actually works for NASA in Houston. He is a contractor working for Booz Allen Hamilton, and he supports the International Space Station now as the leader of the Magic Team. And they do the pre-engineering for the uncrewed SpaceX missions that take supplies up to the International Space Station. And he, among other things, designs the visualizations that are shared with NASA and sometimes uh, with the wider world. And so anyway, we uh, are pretty excited about that, but we've just, my wife and I have been science fiction geeks. I'm a Star Wars fan. She's a Star Trek fan. Together, you know, we, we do love space and it's an exciting thing to share with our students. So you can check those resources out. I also love storytelling. I love digital storytelling. I love oral history. I love family oral history. One of my favorite projects to do with my students involves my students interviewing a member of their family. And so in Oklahoma for the last 16 years, um, I partnered with a number of educators and others to have a nonprofit called Story Chasers. It's no longer a story, a nonprofit, but it is still a passion project. And so here in the last few months, I've actually rebooted the website. Um, it was a WordPress blog, and now it's a Google site. And so you can go to www.storychasers.org. Um, this is the examples page. And one of the things that I've been sort of wrestling with is thinking about different categories of digital stories, not to focus on tools, because the story is what's important, but I am all about empowering people to be effective and more effective media communicators. And in the case of story chasing, being a witness to history, being a witness to the experiences that you might have had yourself or that other family members or others that you work with or have contact with have had, um, and being able to be a digital archivist to preserve and share those things safely, complying with copyright law um, and, and respecting people's intellectual property and, and you know, their rights 
voice, to their image, and to their voice, all of those things. But I really, really, kind of like I love barbecue, and there's a lot of great conversations to have around barbecue, there's a lot of great conversations to have around oral history and storytelling. So thinking about audio stories, photo stories, quick edit stories, video stories, narrated sketch notes, and published documentaries, and then also multimedia enhanced stories. Uh, these are things I'm passionate about and I'm doing some workshops in our area and uh, I'm, I'm in the process of developing some um, hopefully online courses that people will be able to take as well as more resources around that. So I've given a TEDx talk on that topic. So on that subject, uh, I've given a few TEDx talks, had some chances to do that at the University of Oklahoma, um, up in Enid for a TEDx youth event that they had at the high school in Enid, and then most recently at the University of Central Oklahoma. You can Google my name, West Fryer TEDx, and find those on YouTube, but you can also find a, a playlist of presentations that I've made, including those presentations, and that's certainly, um, those are topics that I'm really passionate about. Uh, and my most recent one on technology fear therapy touches on the idea of protecting our families, protecting ourselves from online bad actors. And that's such an important thing that's just becoming more and more important the more people that are online. So I've been blogging since 2003. I've had a blog on speedofcreativity.org since 2005, and that's when I started my podcast. And so that is a space that I have not shared as much. I think I have over 5,000 posts or something like that on that site, but uh, I used to blog daily. But, you know, the advent of social media, microblogging platforms like Twitter and Facebook, <clears throat> they've made the sharing process not only more frictionless, <laughs> of course, Twitter's kind of become a dumpster fire in the last two weeks and we don't know what's going to happen with it. But in general, blogging has, has not been as popular, uh, certainly as it was in the mid you know, 2000s when we were talking about Web 2.0, but my blog's still alive, my, my resources are there, and I'm, I'm still sharing things. And so I'd encourage you to check out not only my blog, but my podcast that you'll find at speedofcreativity.org. Um, in addition, uh, every week, almost, with a few exceptions, um, I am on a Wednesday night web show and podcast with this guy. Uh, this is Dr. Jason Neifer, who uh, is a good friend. He lives up in Missoula, Montana. Uh, he's now the director of the Montana Digital Academy and a longtime educator, social studies teacher, debater, uh, just an awesome guy and one of, the, one of the most wonderful geeks you will ever meet. And so I get to hang out with Jason for about an hour uh, every Wednesday evening. Now, since I've moved to the East Coast, we start at 9 p.m. Central, which is 8, sorry, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain, or 6 p.m. Pacific. But uh, that's a show that if you can catch us live, that's awesome. If not, you can catch the archives. EdTechSR.com is our website. Our Twitter handle is EdTechSR. And we, we live stream with a, a tool called StreamYard, both to Facebook Live and also to YouTube Live. And the videos are archived there and then on the website. And I've got to do that this weekend for our show. Um, I'll compress that into about a 100 megabyte um, video file using a lovely open source tool called Handbrake and then I uh, publish a approximately 15 to 20 uh, megabyte audio file that's a, that's a 32 kilobit audio file, so ed tech situation room. Um, since 2013, I've maintained this website called Show With Media. You can find it at showwithmedia.com. Originally, I was naming this, you know, Mapping Media to the Common Core. Wasn't that a terrible title? Uh, who knew what was gonna happen to Common Core? But uh, I still do have uh, books for six of these now, I think. Um, well, there's actually a couple more. Yeah, because there's 12. Um, originally, there was nine. But um, I've got some of those books out on Amazon, and that's on my list of, of book projects to update. But the website's available, and some of it's out of date, but there's a lot of things that, that are up to date. And if you want to create something, actually, that's my, those are my old screenshots. I now, I need to update that. Those are all things that I drew. Um, I've got new icons that I forgot that I didn't, didn't update that with. But anyway, if you want to know about tools for creating sketch notes, for creating you know, five photo stories, audio interviews, a lot of those things, uh, showwithmedia.com is a great place to go. So you can also find me on Amazon. Um, I've published several books, and I aspire to publish more to update some of the books that I've uh, written in the past, but also some new projects. And um, all of my books, 
will eventually be linked here at books.westfriar.com. There's a wonderful platform and tool called Pressbooks, which integrates with WordPress. Um, and they've changed their licensing models and everything uh, a little recently, but I've decided to just go ahead and host my own. And so right now I have uh, one book, which is two chapters away from completion and being able to send to Amazon uh, that's called Pocket Share Jesus, uh, Be a Digital Witness for Christ. So I am a follower of Jesus and uh, love to be able to share Bible verses, share stories, uh, share God's Word through digital media. And so that isn't something that um, I, I, as I have gotten older, becoming sort of more integrated in my identity has become something that I've been striving to do. And so anyway, I've, 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 I've uh, grown up in the church and, and uh, lived that life, but you know, that's, that, it's something I'm passionate about as well. And if that's of interest, you can find out more information. That whole book is available uh, freely to access on books.westfriar.com. So, I've talked for 15 minutes. If you've stayed with me, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, please reach out. I've got contact techniques, methods that you can reach out to me uh, listed on westfriar.com slash contact. And that link, along with many others, you can find on westfriar.com slash after. So wherever you happen to be in place, in, wherever you happen to be in space and time, um, I hope you're finding the, the things that you're learning online and the connections that you're making enriching. We live, as I said, in a very fractured and polluted information landscape, but we still live in a world where there can be phenomenal opportunities for transformative learning. And I have certainly found in my career that these tools that we're able to use on the internet allow us to connect to people that are passionate, that share interests, um, and in many cases are aware of resources and strategies and techniques and things that can really make a huge difference in, in the life that we lead. So whether you're cooking barbecue or you're teaching media literacy or you're wanting to get students excited about space exploration and STEM, um, there's a lot to be able to share and help uh, others get excited about and, and want to learn more. Join me on the journey. Take care.